morning everybody, we have very nice weather. Today I'm here with Timur, which is uh, our first officer in Austrian Airlines. Good morning. And uh, today we'll compare the walk around of an engineer and a pilot. So exactly. first we will take a look on the Timur's walk around and then we'll proceed with mine. So we start here with the pitot tubes as well as the oxygen pressurizer for the cockpit mask. Okay, what is Timur talking about? He's speaking about uh, this oxygen discharge indicator. That one is connected to the oxygen system for the crew and exactly about this cylinder inside of here. Uh, this indicator is connected to the pipe, which is then split. One leads to the high pressure cylinder and the other one leads to the low pressure reductor or low pressure system. Once you have overpressure either on the cylinder side or on the reductor side, this pressure is then sent through this line uh, overboard and uh, whenever this happens, this disc will be blown away and you will see yellow collar there and thanks to that we'll find out that uh, there was overpressure and we need to inspect the system. Our angle of attack sensors so we have free movement and no damages on it as well as the static probes so we have all our instruments uh, reliable. After that we continue with the nose wheel landing gear uh, we look at the hydraulic lines, uh, if there is no leakage, as well as the light bulbs uh, for our taxi and turn of lights. We can also by that check the lights of our cockpit call and APU fire systems. And we continue forward towards the radome. Also check here for damages. And on the other side, you have more static ports, P2 tubes, and also the FO captain static ports. Take a slight glimpse inside the freight area and the cargo doors to see if they have damage on. And then continue to the leading edge of the wing. Uh, check the fuel panel that we have our fuel audit. Today it's 11.8 uh, tons to Porto. Flight time is two hours and 55 minutes. On top of these two hours, 25 minutes, we have uh, the fuel for the alternate and the final reserve, which is another half an hour. Plus, since the weather is not so good in Porto today, we take an extra fuel on top of that, which is discretionary to our pilots. Timur just mentioned alternate. What does it mean, alternate airport? It is something like a plan B for landing, which means that if a airport in Porto will be closed for weather or uh, some damage on the runway or any other problem, uh, they need to have enough fuel to get to other airports. So for example, for Porto, uh, it can be Lisbon. This is airport where the uh, Austrian Airlines have a contract with, a, for example, maintenance provider, or we are flying there, so we can have a full support on this airport. After that, we uh, check the engines for uh, debris, especially now it was an overnight flight. It's the first flight of the day. So insects could have bird nests, uh, some bees, something like that, maybe birds or uh, foreign objects which are flying around somewhere could hang into the engines. So we check them as well as on the front side for free movement. We have an out of the EU flight incoming. We check our seals that we have the engine oil compartment sealed with the correct seal number. Free movement of the engine blades as well as ice creation. So we don't have that overnight. Fuel leakage or oil leakage. Same on the other side. And then we continue with the leading edge 
outside as well the lights the positions are light on the right side is green then the static antennas and the trailing edge with the flat fairings and we come to our main landing here we check on here the brake indicator so that we have enough you know, brakes left for this turnaround. Also here we check for fuel leakage and especially on uh, flights after an overnight stay we check that the gear pins are removed so the after towing that we can safely retract the landing here. So, also here you can see that during fueling um, we have the ground connector to remove all static energy from the aircraft to avoid um, fires during refueling of the aircraft. Same what we did on the forward after uh, cargo door, we do it at the aft cargo door, check them. Also the inside ceilings. And now it's going to get a little bit noisy because we have the APU already running because uh, the passengers are already boarding. <laughs> <laughs> yep, APU and fax. So at the half of the aircraft, we check the APU fire extinguisher that we have directed and the antennas of the aircraft leading edge as well as the horizontal stabilizer. We once again talk about uh, pressure discharge disc and this one exactly belongs to APU fire extinguishing system. Uh, and for that I move to a uh, stabilizer compartment which you can see here in front of me. Directly behind me is APU firewall and we are talking about this uh, uh, fire extinguishing bottle which belongs to the APU. Whenever there is overpressure inside of that bottle the pressure uh, is released through that line which you see over there and then it is sent down here overboard and whenever this happened that little disc which you saw outside the red disc will be blown away and whenever we find this missing disc during walk around we know that something is wrong with this bottle and we need to inspect this system also, what is very noisy during the walk around, you can hear right now uh, the packs, the air conditioning. So, I hope you still hear me well. Also, like you can see here now on the brake, this is a great example for a brake which is near the limit, but still good to fly for another 10 to 20 rotations. Uh, it looks very close, but Are very noisy. A little quieter here, here on the left hand side, you can see our red position light.
And also what you can hear now, the clicking of the engine. It is not a fault, it is by choice. And you can see that the fan blades, one by one, have a little bit of space between them. But I think Thomas told you about that and you can see it in one of his videos. I didn't make video about it, but we can mention it over here. This is fan of CFM 56-5B and that sound which you can hear, the clapping, comes from mid-shroud spanners. They are over here in the middle of the blade. Uh, their primary function is to prevent twisting of the blades uh, due to aerodynamical loads. The mid-shroud spanners also provide dampening function to prevent vibrations. Uh, whenever engine is off and, for example, it's, uh, the fan is windmilling, thanks to, uh, uh, thanks to wind, you can hear this clapping sound. This is because there is certain play between the blades and mid-shroud spanners are clapping against each other. Once the fan hit certain RPM, Thanks to centrifugal force, the blades will sit on an exact position. The mid-shroud spanners interlinked and they will form one single disc. And this will provide higher rigidity of the fan. And as I said before, it's prevent the vibration of the fan. Thanks and to just dump. for comparison, this is CFM Leap 1A, which belongs again to Airbus A320. But this is newer generation of the engines. These blades are made out of uh, composite materials and as you can see there are no mid-shroud spanners. The progress in technology you can see also here. So and now we are done with the outside check and I hope you liked it and we take you around for the next time. We were walking around with Timur. Uh, thank you very much for yes. your time. The boarding is completed. I have to go. We are going to Porto and I will see you the next time. And we'll continue uh, with my walk around. Okay, let's start the walk around. Uh, I'm always starting from the nose uh, and I'm checking the front section for any sort of damage. You can see, uh, for example, there, there is a dent. Check the uh, low pressure turbine blades. The bird can be somewhere there. Fuel uh, drain vent, if there is any fuel coming out of those two holes, I have a problem. And since this video will be too long, I split it in two chapters. So in the next one, you're gonna see my walk around and I'll try to explain you more or less everything what I need to perform during check, which is called post-flight check. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for a maintenance manual, but always use the latest documentation released by a manufacturer or of course procedure which are released by a company. I would like to say big thanks to Timur for his time and uh, his explanation. Uh, big thanks to Austrian Airlines that they let me record all these videos for you. Thank you each and everybody for watching and especially to support from the members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomasz, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto and I'm looking forward to see you all next Sunday. Bye.